going to be installing this new wiring harness for the spec E46 compatibility. Um, it requires a different computer with a locked tune. And starting up with the ECU that's back here, this wiring harness kind of gets tucked back there, goes around the back and then across the top and then among the uh, fuel spark plugs. Um, it'll be a little bit more obvious, but uh, these colorful wires are the same bundle of wires coming out here. And then I'm essentially going to kind of just follow those wires all the way back. Um, hopefully I can get decent video of this to help anybody else out who used to do this. Once you get the cover off, you'll see all the very colorful wires. I'll get started on that now. All right, I got all of the wires disconnected, the ECU. Um, this one right here was kind of a pain. It was tucked in right here. Uh, it made it a lot easier to take this giant fuse or whatever this is and just to get more clearance. Um, so they're all up now. I think what I'm going to do is just start here with these, this bundle of wires and kind of just start tracing it back, disconnecting and kind of working as I go, get as far as I can. And then maybe I'll move on to these if necessary. I'm not really even sure if all of them need to be replaced or if it's just these. So here we go. All right, so check out this, uh, pop these up, kind of squeezed this tube of wires up through here, got it free. And now we're gonna take this off and three other mounting points for this kind of, I don't know what you would call it, central module something. Um, there should be three bolts. One, two, and three. So, one, two, right in here, two, and three will be somewhere back there somewhere. Pretty close to <laughs> the very far end. I might have to take off this plastic and take piece to get there. We'll see. Maybe we can access it from the side. Uh, we'll see. Right. So I decided to just take off this entire uh, <laughs> intake manifold. So. First step do that, doing that is to take this sensor. I think it's called the DZA. Not really sure what it does exactly. Probably something to do with uh, air pressure or whatever. Um, first step, take this little sensor out from here. Take this out. Remove this bolt, uh, the T40. And then that one with the T40 as well. And then it should slide out. I'm definitely glad I got the entire intake off. Well, not the entire intake, but you know what I mean. Because that is where the bolt is holding on the wiring harness is going to be. Right there, which is right below the intake. All right. I'm gonna start taking this entire wiring harness off next. All right, so just a little update. I've gotten these three bolts off. That one, the one that was up here, and the one that's way down there. So this is totally loose now, um, aside from being kind of stuck with, by the dipstick a bit, and whatever wires back there are still left. And I've unplugged 
this wire here. Oh, that's from the intake. This wire here, uh, this wire down here. Um, I believe, yes, it's very gross anyway. Uh, <laughs> this wire, well, first plugged in here. This wire, plugged down here. And then finally, this wire, which was plugged way down, right? Here. So getting this <laughs> through uh, here, because it was kind of tucked back there um, down to that area. Uh, I was going to try to fish it out, but it got kind of stuck and I got tired of waiting. So I kind of just pulled it through this, the wires through here. <laughs> Not the safest way to do it at all, but I don't need this anymore. So it doesn't really matter. Moving on, uh, next I'm going to probably have to take this off because eventually I'm going to have to get to all of the plugs on this, uh, what would you call this, this part of the wiring harness, uh, because this is the fuel rail right here, as you can see one of the injectors, this has six, just like this new one, has six plugs for each injector, um, and I'm relatively close to being done, I have these three plugs plus the two grounds. Um, this plug, that plug, that plug, that plug, and the six, and it should be good to go after that. It's just gonna take some time to get the intake manifold off, and I'm not sure if I'll actually have to take the fuel rail off completely. I'm hoping not. Um, doesn't seem like there's too much in the way. Obviously, I'm probably gonna have to like pop these off or pop these out of their place. Um, but yeah, making progress. All right, I'm almost done getting all the little clips off of each injector. I moved these two clips that were here before. You kind of just have to push down on this side and it pops out to the right. Um, tried to move all these wires out of the way as much as I could so that I could, you know, <laughs> these are what those, these two clips, this one and this one were attached to, but um, pulled those out, popped both both clips out. Now on the last one, trying to kind of get the screwdriver, um, the one I've been working with is just a little too long, but basically you have to push the right side of the clip to the right and the left side of the clip to the left. And then I push them down. I wasn't able to just push them down and I wasn't able to get the last four out. They're just kind of sitting in there uh, somewhere. Um, but there's not too many spaces for them to actually fall. So I'm hoping that once I actually get the uh, wiring harness to the injectors out, I'll be able to just kind of pluck them out with the needle nose pliers or whatever. But this one's being a little pain. Um, it's just kind of in a weird spot, so I need a shorter screwdriver. All right, so <laughs> getting this part out, all of the insulation on this was so cracking and crumbly. I already knew that was probably gonna happen, but it completely kind of crumbled off here. Um, just pulling this out, uh, pulling out the wiring. So my suggestion is to kind of lift from the front end and also from the back end. The back end actually came out first for me. Um, I'm gonna have to kind of probably un undo some zip ties back there, cut some zip ties, so this will actually come free. Um, so that'll be next. Okay, so not much time has passed <laughs> since the last little clip, but basically I'm just kind of trying to figure out which wires I need to disconnect from the end of the wiring. Back here, there is some plug way down here. Let's figure it out. It feels like it goes down here. And there's no way I'm going to be able to see what I'm looking at. But whatever I am touching here, I'm trying to get out of the camera so I can see it. <laughs> Needs to be unhooked. This wire. It's 
to be unplugged. All right, I don't know about you guys, but after taking these two bolts off, this one and this one, this piece was so hard to get out, I literally had to grab it with these pliers and pull, grab on to outside of this and start pulling real hard. Um, it's just literally kept in with another hose on the other, other side. That was frustrating. <laughs> But I got it. And I'm essentially taking off the entire uh, throttle body. Or sorry, well I did take the throttle body off, but I'm also taking the entire intake manifold off too. So here we go. In order to do that, I'm gonna take this fuel rail off as well. Fuel rail's off. A bunch of fuel kind of spilled out the back side of it, but that's okay. I know it's a little late to kind of be saying this, but I don't really know for sure if you really need to take off this entire intake manifold. But I want to do it so I can make sure I can see everything that's happening behind here um, and know exactly what connections go where. Uh, so when I put the new one in, I have a good idea of what I'm really doing. Um, as you can see, I've loosened the, uh, I loosened or took off this bolt that holds the dipstick in place. That way I could get access to the, uh, throttle body and everything a lot easier and everything that was blocking my way. Um, most of these connections are off. Um, you can kind of see which ones like this one right here is still connected. Um, also this, this one right here that snakes all the way back to the very base uh, of I guess where the intake manifold bottom is. This nut I believe all the way back here that gray one is the last one holding on the intake manifold. And hey, I just found one of the nuts I lost right there. So I'm glad because I was frustrated and trying to find it up top <laughs> for a while. Um, that's good news. And I might, I, mean, I think after that, there's really only like this wire left, which comes up to the actual injector harness. So. After that, I think they're going to be really close to finishing up here. Um, yeah, so let's see. All right, I've gotten all the bolts off and I've managed to wrangle this thing slightly off, but there's it's catching on something. And I think it might just be that one plug right there. Um, right there. Uh, I'll need to disconnect that plug um, from the right side. It was going to be ridiculously hard to get at it from the other side. Not that blue, not the blue plug, but right above it, right there. Um, we'll see if that helps. This is the fuel rail uh, connection. And I was thinking about pulling that off, but I think I'm just going to try to get the whole thing off together. <sighs> but that might not make any sense because it needs to come off either way from the actual source of the fuel. So, we'll see. Alright, I just realized what's holding me back. It's this thing. It's the positive terminal connection. This snakes... Positive terminal connection snakes all the way down here. And all the way under that way. That, I'm pretty sure, is what is mainly keeping me back. Obviously, there's this tube right here as well. But this is the main thing holding me back at the moment. <laughs> this is mostly out now. Make it any way it needs to go. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting impatient. All right. <laughs> Quick little update. You do not have to actually disconnect your fuel rail. At least on my intake manifold, you do not. Um, yes, I have a broken vacuum hose. It's been like that for a while. Actually. But here is where your fuel rail actually connects. This tab just snaps on and off. Just like that, I use a screwdriver, 
because I just like using tools rather than my hands. And that's all you need to do to get the fuel rail off. That's all you have to do. Um, a little clip, and then you can take it off. Obviously snake this thing through the last slot and you're good to go. Here we are. So happy because I only have, I don't, I didn't have to disconnect the fuel rail here, here. And now I just have a bunch of wires that I can disconnect from wherever they are so much easier. And um, hopefully, okay, I'm gonna jinx myself, but um, I'm so close to getting this wiring harness completely out. So close to getting it out. Um, it's really just kind of this smaller bundle of wires left to disconnect. Here we go. Okay, not really sure exactly how to get to this insanely tucked in one. Plug right back in here. I think what I'm gonna have to do is take this bolt off, which will let me move this way out of the way. Um, then there's the yellow and black wire, which goes to this top nut right there. Um, solid black wire, which goes to this side nut right here. Then way down, right, I don't know if I'll be able to actually get it on camera. Yep, right there is the last one. I'm pretty sure I'll have decent access from the underside of the car. Um, if not, I'd kind of screwed there, but I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. Um, and I think I'll pretty much be good to go. So one, two, three, four. Um, yeah. And this one was number five. And then that'll be it. That'll pretty much be the last ones to go. I'll pick this up tomorrow. <laughs> All right, so taking off the wheel so I can access this plug. I was hoping I could get through here, but that's just not enough space for my hand. So, took off the wheel. Easier to access this way. All right, I uh, officially have it all out. Um, all the wiring harness. Uh, I did remove that bolt to get to that plug and then underneath the car, I'll show that later. Cleaned up the intake manifold area the head. It's nice and shiny now, uh, for the most part. Um, it's nice to have a, you know, nice surface for the gasket to seal on. Um, now, I did keep the fuel injector rail um, connected, and now I'm going to disconnect these two plugs for the uh, wiring to the Oh, what do you call them? Spark plugs, coil packs, spark plug coil packs, that's right. <laughs> and, that, um, and I think that's the only thing that's really connected to the actual uh, valve cover, gasket, or you know, cam cover. So it's pretty s simple. These are super easy to take off. You just flip open, uh, flip it open, unplug it, and then pull straight up, and then you can see all the spark plugs. So that's the next step. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to leave the spark plugs in for now while I take the head off. I think that's what I'm going to do because I do have another set that I'm going to be putting in eventually during this entire process.